the too long didn't watch version of this video is that I need to locate a replacement for the two line 40 column LCD in my Oberheim OBMX. There's two power pins on one side, a 14 pin 2x7 connector on the other side, and the driver chip is a KS0066F00. And although I found plenty of 40 by 2 displays by Googling, I can't seem to find any with the right number of pins. Most of the ones I found have a 2 by 8 16 pin connector. Now I will document the painful process of getting that display out. This could be useful to you if you need to disassemble your own OBMX, or maybe for some reason you just want to hear me get really frustrated about something. So right now you can only read characters on the display when you press on the display and you can only see a few characters at a time. So this is obviously problematic. This seems to be a common problem with LCDs and old equipment. The most obvious place to start is to remove these eight screws on the front panel. And that didn't seem to do much. This isn't budging at all. I then tried removing these three screws on each side, not the screws on the rack ears, the screws next to the rack ears. That didn't seem to help, and in retrospect, I'm not sure it was necessary. Okay, so I took out all of the cards, all of the voice cards and the master card in order to try to see what's going on. Here's the connections to the front panel. And I've noticed these screws here. There seems to be one, two, three, four here. Maybe there's ones here too. Oh, good grief. Do I have to dismantle this whole thing just to get to the stupid LCD display? Okay, I don't think this is necessary, but just for the heck of it, I'm going to take the bottom off just to try to get a feel for what's going on. And no, that was not illuminating. Other than there is a screw in here that might become relevant. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is to try to get these screws out. Let's see. This one, I think, is meant to hold this metal plate to this metal plate stuff back here. But I think this screw and five other screws like it. One, two, three, four, five are um, probably holding some sort of PCB or something to this metal plate. So let me try to get those out. Okay, so I got these four out. But now I'm running into the problem that I can't really get to that screw sufficiently with the big power supply sitting there. Oh, good grief. Do I need to take the whole power supply out? This is so dumb. Okay, so it looks like the power supply is actually held in place by some screws on the outside here. So let me try to remove those screws. There's no equivalent to those screws on the other side. Okay, so I removed six screws and the power supply can now jiggle around. And boy, that is going to be really difficult to get back in once I'm done. But hopefully I can get out these screws now. There's my power supply dangling around and I've got the last screw right here. Okay, now we're finally getting somewhere. Look, front panel almost off. Getting those screws out was incredibly difficult. Not just getting to them, but actually had to get some pliers and get some leverage on the screwdriver itself to get some torque on it, I should say, um, in order to get those out. All right, so it looks like the last thing I need in order to actually fully pop the panel out is to disconnect the power switch here. Okay, so for posterity, for being able to get this back together later, looking from the bottom of the unit, the upper left connector here is connecting to the actual power connector that goes to the outside world. And the lower left connector is connected over to here to what's looking like the fuse box. The upper right is the green wire, and the lower right is a black wire that looks like it's going to the power supply PCB. Oh, I spoke too soon. There's one more thing. There's the headphone jack. Let's see where that connects. Okay, so the headphone jack connects to this connector here on the motherboard. And just for posterity, looking at it with the Oberheim motherboard text here going this direction, the red 
is on the left. Okay, here's the board, finally. Here's the front panel, looking at it from the back. And this LCD board here doesn't actually appear on the OBMX schematic, so I'm assuming this is some sort of pre-made module that Gibson, well, I guess technically it was Zeta Systems, I forget, something like that, Zeta something or the other, I think. Gee whiz, maybe, I forget the name of all the companies involved. That's something that they just bought off the shelf and plugged in here. So hopefully we can swap this out if I can find an equivalent unit. Let's see, the chip here is a KS0066F00323. And let's see, there's power connections over here, I guess. Um, let's see, it says Rev0, and it looks like it says V00224, and then I'm not sure. Possibly 8-8, eight, eight maybe? Those could be sixes. I'm not really sure what's going on there. So it looks like it's held in by these little twisty tab things. So I'll go get some pliers and untwist those. Wait a minute. There's something else going on here. I thought this would just lift out, but it's not. Let's see. Let me get these nuts off. Actually, this is interesting. There's only screws on these three sides and on this side. Oh, am I expected to actually go in from the other side? Don't tell me I actually have to undo all of these screws to get to the other side of the board. Okay, for posterity with the text on the driver chip here looking correct, the red stripe is down. I think it just took me something like 20 minutes to get those nuts off. This was really meant to be screwed in from the other side. Okay, so here's the hole where the LCD used to be, and here's the LCD module free and clear. And sadly, there's no other clues about it on the other side. Wait, no, no, wait, there is. S-T-L-D-Y-G-B-N-453. Huh. Okay, so that's what it says on the LCD. And I actually, I misinterpreted earlier what these are doing. This is holding this onto it and i'm betting this is all really one unit so i doubt there's a way to replace this bit without replacing the rest of the board although i don't know huh let's see there is one other clue i didn't notice earlier it says opv0 on the side of the board okay so i typed that 2014 stl dygbn code into google and this came up but alas, this is definitely not something that's going to be compatible. If we zoom in on this, we see that there's these glop top chips instead of the kind of chips we actually have on our board. And instead of a 14 pin connector at the end here, this is a 16 pin connector. So no dice. Anyway, if you have any clue on where to source this LCD board, please leave a comment below. It would make me very happy to be able to replace this.